Today we're going to look at a nice limit problem and we're going to solve this limit problem two different ways. So our goal is to find the limit as n goes to infinity of n times the nth root of x minus 1 where x is any positive real number. Okay, so our first strategy will be to expand this nth root of x using some sort of power series, but I need to recall a couple of things before that. So the first thing that I need to recall is that if I have two numbers z and w, and these can be complex numbers, then I have z to the w power is the same thing as e to the w times the natural log of z. And that's going to be helpful because the series expansion for the exponential function is quite straightforward and well known. So I'll just write it like this. e to the u is the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of u to the n over n factorial. But that turns out to be 1 plus u plus u squared times a bunch of other stuff. And so those will be everything that's kind of higher than u squared. So in particular, we'll have u squared over 2 plus u cubed over 3 factorial. But needless to say, we can factor u squared out of everything that's left. So we might call that some sort of remainder term if we wanted to, but we won't worry about being super careful about that. Okay, so now that we've got these tools recalled, let's maybe go into our first solution to this limit. And that will be to rewrite this as the limit as n goes to infinity. I have n times, I'll write this as x to the 1 over n minus 1. Then I'll take that x to the 1 over n and, you, and write it using this exponential rule right here. So I have the limit as n goes to infinity. And then I have e to the 1 over n times the natural log of x minus 1. Okay, so that's good. Now I have this is the limit as n goes to infinity of n times. Now I'll expand this exponential just like I have down here. This standard Maclaurin series for the exponential function is just in this setting. I'll take u to be equal to 1 over n times the natural log of x. Okay, and then I'll also like collapse some stuff together into this remainder. Okay, so that'll give me 1 plus 1 over n times the natural log of x. And then I'll have plus, well, it's going to be 1 over n squared times natural log of x squared. But I'll absorb that natural log of x squared into this orange box. And that'll give me 1 over n squared times a remainder. And the important thing about this remainder is that its limit is not infinity as n approaches infinity. So let's write that down. So the limit as n goes to infinity of this remainder is not equal to infinity. We can actually calculate it if we wanted to. So notice that this remainder will be something like this. We'll have the natural log of x squared over 2 plus the natural log of x cubed over 3 factorial times n. So here I'm missing my n squared because I pulled it out. Here I've only got an n because I pulled the n squared out and so on and so forth. So notice that we can calculate this limit exactly. And this limit exactly is in fact equal to 1 half times the natural log of x squared. Okay, so let's partition this off because we don't really need it. The important thing is that it's not infinity. Okay, and then I'll have this minus one, which I just bring down. And now let's cancel. So this one and this minus one can cancel. And then I can multiply this in through, and that gives me the limit as n goes to infinity of the natural log of x plus 1 over n times this remainder term. Maybe I'll write this as r sub n of x because it kind of depends on n and x, although the limit just depends on n. Okay, 
So then we can apply our limit and we'll see that this bit right here most definitely tends to zero. And that's because this remainder term does not tend to infinity or negative infinity, I guess I should say. And this one over n term tends towards zero, which means in the end, this thing tends towards the natural log. So we have this limit is equal to the natural log. So we have the limit of these functions so-called pointwise converges to the natural log function. Okay, so now that we've looked at this solution to this limit, let's maybe go ahead and look at another, albeit sketchier version, but it relies on a fact from a video that I proved before. So before we jump into our second solution, I'd like to urge you to subscribe if you haven't done yet. I've noticed on the analytics that only about half of the viewers are subscribed, so I think we've got a lot of gains to be made from that. Okay, so this second solution will be built off of a result which I did in a previous video, and that result is as follows. So if we have a function f from the positive real numbers to the real numbers, and it's continuous satisfying this functional equation that f of x times y equals f of x plus f of, f of y, then f of x is a multiple of the natural log function. Okay, so we're going to actually show that this function defined by this limit satisfies this functional equation. And then maybe I'll leave a little bit of a homework exercise to show which multiple of the natural log function it is. But we don't need to guess anything about that because we saw that in the previous calculation. Okay, so let's maybe start by proving the following claim. And that is that this function satisfies our functional equation. So let's say for all x and y, which are positive real numbers, we have f of x times y is equal to f of x plus f of y. Okay, so let's see how this proof will go. It's actually not so bad. Okay, so let's start with f of x times y. So that's going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of n times the nth root of xy minus 1. And notice like I put a big gap there because we're going to use the standard mathematical trick of adding 0. And which version of 0 will we add? It'll be adding the nth root of y and subtracting the nth root of y. So we have minus the nth root of y plus the nth root of y. Okay, great. But now what I'll do is separate this into pieces. So I'll separate it out here. And then I'll also separate it out between those two. So for this first batch of terms, I'm going to factor out an nth root of y. So this is going to be the nth root of y times the quantity, the nth root of x minus 1. And then I'll also split this limit into two limits. And this is where it gets sketchy because you're only allowed to do this if you know the limit exists. But I think it's illustrative to do this calculation anyway. Okay, so anyway, this is going to give us the limit as n goes to infinity of, we have the nth root of y times n times the nth root of x minus 1. That's from our first thing. And then we'll have plus the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of y minus 1 times n. Okay, great. But as n goes to infinity, since y is fixed, as a positive real number, we know that this thing goes to the number one. So I won't prove that, but that's well known. So if that goes to the number one, notice we're left with the limit as n goes to infinity of n times the nth root of x minus one, but that's exactly our definition of f of x. And then furthermore, this thing over here is exactly our definition for f of y. So looking at this extreme left, and right-hand side of our, albeit a bit sketchy calculation, we have proved that our function satisfies this functional equation. Then maybe just verbally I'll say why it's continuous, and that's because it's the limit of continuous functions. Now, again, there's a little bit something sketchy going on there. It's in fact the uniform limit of continuous functions, but I think that's okay. So all we have to do is some sort of calculation 
to, find, to show that this number A is in fact the number one, and then we've retrieved the first solution we came up with. So maybe I'll leave that as a homework, but I'll state it on the next board. So we just finished showing that our function defined in terms of this limit was continuous and it satisfied this functional equation. Now as a homework exercise, I'll leave it to you guys to show that if we plug in the number E into this limit, so in other words, we evaluate our function at E, we indeed get the number one. So like I said, that's a homework exercise, but notice if this homework exercise is satisfied, and we have f of e is equal to one, then in fact, we know that f of x equals natural log of x, which is exactly the same result that we got from our first method. Now, if you'd like to see the video where we do this functional equation, I think it's called a functional equation from my favorite textbook. That should be linked on the screen right now. And that's a good place to stop. Music